Recently, I uploaded a video about the story mode exclusive items in Super Mario Maker 2, and it seems like you all moderately enjoyed it. In that video, I discussed my theories as to why I think those items are not featured in the level creator. While the decision to cut those was pretty weird, they're far from the most odd exclusions, so today I'm here to talk about five new mysteries in Mario Maker 2 and my theories to possibly explain them. I'm not sure if I'll make multiple of these videos, but this time around the mysteries all focus on seemingly cut content. Whether it's cut content from the first game, weird decisions by the developers, or really obviously hinted at DLC, we're gonna cover it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. At 100k, I'll rank every moon in Mario Odyssey, and let's jump right into our first mystery. Right off the bat, we have a mystery that has plagued the Mario Maker 2 community ever since the game launched. If you take a look at one of my most popular videos, no, not that one. Ugh, definitely not that one. Ah, there we are. We'll see that I covered the possibility of an extra game style coming to the game post-launch. Now, normally speculation about DLC is not really worthy of being called a mystery. For example, there's no conspiracy keeping Gino out of Smash Bros. He's just an irrelevant character. Get over yourself. But anyways, the reason I call this a mystery is just due to how much evidence there was to support there possibly being a new game style. First, let's take a real close look at the game style menu. Okay, well, a close look isn't really required as it's actually pretty obvious why people think there was going to be another style. There's a massive gap right here in the menu, perfectly sized for another game style to just pop right into. If they really wanted to just have these five, why not center 3D World? Not only does this look nicer, but it would stop or at least heavily slow down any speculation. And that's not even the only thing. The section 3D World is placed under is titled Extra Game Styles, plural. For all of you three-year-olds out there, plural means two or more. So as you can see, there are clearly signs of there being another style. Even if you disagree with me, I'm sure you can at least understand why people would think this. As I'm sure you all can tell by the way I'm speaking about it, a new game style didn't happen. Cursing all of the Mario Maker community to be stuck with the same five styles, and cursing me with seeing a constant stream of funny and original comments about how my video aged like milk. But that raises the question, what happened to this supposed second extra game style? Well, here's a few of my theories. This first theory suggests that the extra game style was reworked into something else. One of the most talked about games to be added in as possible DLC was Super Mario Bros. 2, USA. There are several reasons for this. One, it's already a 2D game, so translating it into Mario Maker would be easy, and two, its mechanics were fairly different from the other five styles, making it fit perfectly within the extra section. Now, as I said, a Super Mario Bros. 2 game style never ended up happening. However, SMB2 was brought into the game in the form of the SMB2 mushroom for the original Super Mario Bros. game style. This transforms whoever picked up the mushroom into how they looked in SMB2, or in Toadette's case, how she would have looked. This doesn't just change the looks of the character, though, as it also entirely changes their mechanics. With the mushroom, true, Mario is no longer able to jump on enemies to defeat them. Rather, he has to pick up and throw them, exactly like the original game. There's a lot more to this power-up, but in short, they basically perfectly coded how SMB2 would work and Mario Maker 2 with this power-up. Now, the plan very well could have been to make an SMB2 power-up from the very start, rather than its own game style. However, I do think there's a possibility that Nintendo wanted to and got started making an SMB2 game style, only to stop and move what they had finished over to the Super Mario Bros. game style. But why would they stop if they already got the playable characters working? Well, for one, there's a lot more that goes into a game style rather than just the characters, so Nintendo may have just not found it worth continuing. So I guess the follow-up question would be, why is that? Well, to answer, I think it's time we look at theory number two. Now, when I say Mario Maker 2 sold poorly, that's a bit of an exaggeration. I mean, 7.15 million copies sold is nothing to be upset about. I mean, that's over a million more than the sales of the entire Xenoblade Chronicles franchise. Good for nothing weeb games. As I was saying, 7.15 million is solid, but you have to remember that this is Mario we're talking about, the second most famous video game character of all time, so his standard is a lot higher than most. You also have to take into account that the Switch is Nintendo's most popular console, ever, so sales of games are expected to be a bit higher. Of the Switch's library, Mario Maker 2 scores 17th overall as of April 2022, before Breath of the Wild 2 launches, and I'm sure Pokemon is gonna pass it as well. Looking at the games that make up this top 17, seven of them are Mario games, and that's excluding Luigi's Mansion 3 and Smash Ultimate, so really the number is closer to 9. Mario Maker 2 simply is not really that popular sales-wise in terms of the Mario series. In fact, three of the nine games I listed are ports of previous games. Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, 3D All-Stars, and New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe. That last one especially really stings, as that was Mario Maker 2's direct 2D Mario competition, and that sold over 5 million more copies. I wouldn't be surprised if Nintendo expected Mario Maker 2 to have much higher sales than it ended up 
kept receiving. Keep in mind that Mario Maker 2 isn't a port, it's an entirely new game, so I think there's a strong possibility that Nintendo saw this game as a bit of a flop. For that reason, maybe they decided it wasn't worth the effort to add in any more game styles. That's also the reason I believe they ended support for this game so quickly. Mario Maker 2 just didn't have the reach they were hoping it would. Speaking of that last bit of DLC though, that does bring me to theory number 3. This theory is pretty short, building a bit off the last one. Maybe the developers were short on time and they had the choice of either doing Super Worlds or a new game style. In the end, Super Worlds were obviously chosen. Whether that's a good or bad thing though is entirely up to you. I mean, the concept of making your own Mario game is definitely really cool. I think it was the best choice on paper. But anytime I try to make one, I just sit there staring at the map screen for like an hour before giving up. In this theory scenario, that likely would have taken the work they had done for Super Mario Bros. 2 and turned it into the previously mentioned SMB2 Mushroom. Now I think all three of these theories could very well makes sense. However, there's another one that's also pretty important to take a look at. This theory is simply that they never planned on making another extra game style and Nintendo just sucks. The only reason we think that Nintendo might have planned on doing this in the first place is the incomplete feeling style selection screen. As far as I'm aware, no actual developer has come out to say if they were or were not planning on adding another style. Plus, our evidence that this was a possibility from earlier does get a bit flimsy when looked at a bit closer. Sure, there's a whole empty space here for another style, but have you ever looked at Smash Ultimate stage selection screen? <laughs> Oh, and how about the plural text? Well, if we look at the text for the main four game styles, we'll just see that it says game style, singular, despite there being four. Maybe the translators just goofed up here and added in the plural. I mean, I feel like that should have eventually gotten fixed if that were the case, especially considering how many people looked at it as though it was going to be future content. But again, Nintendo can be pretty wacky sometimes. <laughs> I think that's a decent note to leave off our first mystery on. Yeah, remember, we still got four more of these things. Let's go ahead and jump right into our next one here. Now, before making this video, I asked you all in the community tab if you had any ideas for mysteries to cover. Your suggestions were helpful, but a few comments did actually take my question seriously. Specifically, a comment by Vman776 brought up a few good ones, but for this video, I want to focus on his second one, talking about 3D World exclusive items. Now, I've already covered the topic of 3D World exclusive items in previous videos, however, I never really went in depth as to why I think some of these were never brought over. Since 3D World is classed as an extra game style, it does make sense for it to have at least a few unique elements. Enemies like Skip Squeak, Sting Bee, and Hop Chop make sense to remain exclusive since they were actually created for 3D World. There are a few elements though that are 3D World exclusive that really shouldn't be. Two of the most standout are the Porka Puffer and Fire Bro, which are the centers of our next two mysteries. While both of these enemies were obviously featured in 3D World, they weren't created specifically for it. In fact, they were both created all the way back in Super Mario Bros. 3. Okay, well technically that was a boss bass, but they act exactly the same. Thinking about it like that, them being left as 3D World exclusives is pretty odd, so what are some possible explanations? This first theory suggests that the Poker Puffer and Fire Bro are 3D World exclusive purely in order to make the game style more unique and worthy of being labeled as extra. While I definitely think that's at least part of the reason these two were left out, that also makes me ask, why specifically these two? There are plenty of 3D World exclusive enemies they could have chosen that aren't in the other games or Mario Maker 2. Stuff like the Cat Goombas, for example, would have made a lot of sense as a 3D World exclusive enemy. Making two of these exclusives be from other games just makes this content being exclusive feel kinda sleazy. What made them think these two specifically being left out of the four main themes was a good idea. Well, that's where Theory 2 comes in. While the Porka Puffer and Fire Bro do make appearances in Mario 3 and Mario U, they're completely absent from the original Super Mario Bros, and the Fire Bros absent from Mario World. Maybe with Nintendo's really weird way of thinking, they thought that because of this, they should just keep it in 3D World to avoid needing to try and make them work in the other styles. While that is a possible explanation, it's really dumb as several of the items in the main four styles didn't appear in all four games. The brand new Bonsai Bill item only appeared in Mario World and Mario U, yet it was still translated over to the older styles. The Angry Sun only appeared in Mario 3, and yet it appears in all four main styles. Though sometimes I wish it stayed in Mario 3. But clearly an item not appearing in a game beforehand doesn't completely limit it from being in that game style. I think it's safe to say that this theory doesn't make sense. However, Nintendo also doesn't make sense sometimes, so I thought I should raise this theory just in case it was true. Now, I did say that these items are two separate mysteries, as I think both of them could have their own different explanation for being exclusive, so let's take a look at some theories for the Porka Puffer first. 
I mentioned before how the Porka Puffer was only technically in Mario 3, that's because back then it was called the Boss Bass. While Mario Maker 2's Porka Puffer and Mario 3's Boss Bass act the exact same out of water though, this isn't actually how the Porka Puffer has worked in any of the games it's appeared in. In Mario World it just swims beneath the player, never even attempting to jump out. In Mario U, when it does leave the water, it never tries to eat the player. In Mario U specifically, there's actually another fish known as the Cheap Chomp that will attempt to eat the player. So maybe Nintendo thought that adding the Porka Puffer to the other themes wouldn't make sense, due to how different it behaves between games. To be fair though, the way the Mario Maker 2 Porka Puffer works isn't how they function in 3D World either, as they just act like normal swimming fish there. So really, it's more so confusing to me that the Porka Puffer was given this behavior at all. Maybe after the decision to make this the Porka Puffer's moveset was made, the developers thought it'd be too weird to give the Porka Puffer this behavior in all themes due to the other fish, or they didn't want to go through the effort of coding more accurate behavior for the Porka Puffer in all these styles. I do still have one more idea as to why they were cut, and I do actually think this this may be the explanation. If you look back at all of my example footage for the Porka Puffer from Mario World and Mario U, you'll see that the Porka Puffer only appears in land stages that have water at the bottom, so basically the equivalent of a forest stage in Mario Maker 2. Water doesn't just appear in this theme though, as there's also the underwater theme, and despite being fish, the Porka Puffer never actually appears to be fully submerged underwater in these two games I mentioned. In fact, the only time it has been underwater is in Super Mario 3D World, in the one level the enemy appeared in. Alright, it also appears underwater in Super Mario 3D Land, sorry for lying. But the point is that it never appeared underwater in the four main styles, which could very well mean that Nintendo didn't want to come up with how they would work underwater, so they just decided to cut them entirely. While I do think this is some pretty dumb reasoning, I mean come on, the Wiggler has never been drowned in a mainline Mario game, but I do think that this is at least the most likely explanation of the two I came up with. But that's the Porka Buffer knocked out. Now we have to take a look at the more baffling of the two enemies, the Fire Bro. <laughs> If you thought the Perka Puffer being exclusive to 3D World was weird, then you must be really confused about these guys. The Perka Puffer is its own entirely different enemy, however the Fire Bro is an alternative form of an enemy, in this case the Hammer Bro. The Hammer Bro does appear in the main four styles, which makes sense seeing as it's one of the most popular enemies in the series and it originated in the original Super Mario Bros. There have been many forms of this guy over the years, but the Fire Bro is definitely the most popular of the bunch. It coming to Mario Maker's sequel was a fairly predictable outcome, but it being 3D World exclusive was definitely not something I saw coming. I mean, you'd think it'd be incredibly easy to add this guy in, right? Sure, it never appeared in Super Mario Bros or Mario World, but the guy is just a recolor of the Hammer Bro, which already has all of its sprites created for every game style. All you would have to do is color the sprite red, and you're basically done. You know what, here's my Make a Fire Bro speedrun. Keep in mind, I still don't know how to use Photoshop that well, so Nintendo could probably do it a lot faster and more cleanly. Not only would the sprite for the enemy be easy to make, but the fireballs it uses are the same as Mario's, so the sprites can just be entirely reused. The behavior of the Fire Bro as a whole is also pretty much the same as a Hammer Bro, just change them using a hammer to them using a fireball. So with all that said, you may be thinking there is no way there is a good explanation for them only being in 3D World. I was able to come up with a few theories, but they all involve Nintendo using some pretty dumb logic. With that said though, I do think these explanations explanations do sort of make a little bit more sense than the ones I gave for the Porka Buffer from a really, really flawed point of view, but let's go ahead and jump into this first one. So this first theory is kinda stupid, but I left out a theory I thought was stupid from my last video, and I got only 1 trillion comments talking about it, so I guess I should go ahead and say this one here. So between the main four styles in 3D World, the Hammer Bros act generally the same, however there are a few differences. For one, the Hammer Bros is 2 tiles tall in 3D World as opposed to only being 1 tile tall in the other four styles, however the important difference here is how their hammers work. See, in the main four styles, the hammers will just be able to go through solid objects, however in 3D World, the hammers actually act as physical objects, they'll get destroyed when they hit a block. Sometimes. The way the Fire Bros work, their fireballs would have to be the same way, as if they could just go through blocks, they'd never bounce on the floor. So maybe due to them wanting to keep the way their projectiles interact with the environment to be the same between alternate forms, Nintendo decided to keep the Fire Bro in 3D World, as it's the style with the Hammer Bro that throws physical projectiles. As I said though, I think this theory is kinda dumb, especially since I think our second theory here is a much more reasonable explanation. 
Looking back at 3D World, the Fire Bros actually had a surprisingly strong presence there, to the point where I'd say 3D World is probably the enemy's most standout game. For one, they had several levels centered around them and their hideouts where you would have to defeat the enemy within the time limit. On top of that, it made a ton of other appearances as just standard enemies and levels. So unlike the previously mentioned Porka Puffer that was in only one level, the Fire Bro is actually an important part of that game. Due to their strong presence here, Nintendo may have thought of them as a perfect candidate to represent the 3D World game style. On top of that, another major gimmick of 3D World are the clear pipes that can transport many different things like the player, other enemies, and projectiles. The Fire Bros are some of the best enemies to combine with the clear pipes as their fireballs are able to travel through the pipes. All of this combined together makes the Fire Bro feel more like a 3D World enemy rather than an enemy seen throughout the franchise. Personally, this is why I think Nintendo decided to cut them, but hopefully that at least is a possible explanation for one of the most baffling exclusions in Mario Maker 2. Now our last two mysteries both revolve around two items that were in the original Mario Maker but were mysteriously removed from Mario Maker 2 with zero explanation given. The first of the two is the Weird Mushroom. Exclusive to the Super Mario Bros theme, it would turn Mario into Weird Mario. You get all the abilities that a normal mushroom would, except your maximum jump height is increased. Sure this isn't the most in-depth power-up in the world, but I've always liked it. As I said though, this was sadly cut from Mario Maker 2, however strangely enough not entirely. While Weird Mario isn't playable anymore, he does still make an appearance as an easter egg. If you click on the door in the editor, it will make a knocking noise back at you, and if you repeatedly knock on the door, a familiar face will come to answer it. Not only is this a neat little reference, but they went really in depth with this as well, giving each game style its own set of Weird Mario sprites based on that game's power-ups. Oh, and when I say every game style, I mean it, as even 3D World, the one that doesn't include anything fun from the other themes, has a ton of these Weird Mario sprites. So with so much effort going into making this easter egg, why isn't Weird Mario just in the game like he was before? Well, I actually have quite a few solid theories as to why I think this one might have been removed. My first theory here is that maybe Nintendo was concerned that they were giving too much attention to the original Super Mario Bros. style. Every game style in Mario Maker 2 has the Mushroom, Fire Flower, Star, and two more exclusive power-ups based on what was in that original game. The only exceptions are 3D World, which got another extra power-up, and the original Super Mario Bros. style, which has a few more additional power-ups the other themes didn't get, namely the Master Sword and the important one for this segment, the Super Ball Flower. My theory here is that Nintendo didn't want to make it seem like they were giving the Super Mario Bros. style more attention than it really deserved, but at the same time, time, they still wanted to have the Super Ball Flower make its debut here. Due to the Weird Mushroom not really being that unique of a power-up ability-wise in the first place, they likely thought it was worth trading it out for a more unique one. I could definitely see this explanation being the case. Once again, it's pretty dumb reasoning, but it's at least something. There are a few more possible explanations though, so let's jump right to those. Now when I gave the rundown of the Weird Mushroom a few minutes ago, there was a somewhat important element of the item I looked over. While you could place it down as an alternate form of the mushroom after completing all of the developer levels, there was another way to run into this power-up. See, every single mushroom placed down in the Super Mario Bros. game style had a 1% chance to appear as the Weird Mushroom. On paper, that sounds like a funny little idea, but in practice, there's a lot of problems that this caused. Since the Weird Mushroom isn't just an aesthetic change, but rather a gameplay one, it made certain levels that just wanted to give the player a normal mushroom easier, or or in some cases harder than originally intended. Heck, it was even possible to use these to make basically impossible levels since the Weird Mushroom was disabled in the upload process but not in the playing process, a machine like this could be created where the player would have to go through hundreds of mushrooms without ever getting a weird one. While you were guaranteed to make it through as the uploader, a player would have a statistically impossible chance of making it through themselves. Maybe Nintendo considered this to be a big enough problem for them to cut the power-up altogether. Now yeah, they obviously could have made the power-up a standalone, I mean they already did that in Mario Maker 1 sort of, however Nintendo may have felt that removing this randomness removed a lot of the power-up's original identity of being a wacky surprise. Speaking of being wacky though, that does bring us to our next theory. I personally think that Mario Maker 2 has a much different tone than Mario Maker 1. The original game on the Wii U felt much weirder. There were so many little things you could do in it, like shake a muncher a million times to spawn in flies, mess around with the letters on the title screen, and yes, get a weird power-up that turns Mario into a bizarre skinny version of himself. Mario Maker 2, on the other hand, feels much more focused. There's a lower emphasis on being wacky, and it's more so about giving the player more options when building levels. I know a few people miss the more wacky and experimentation-based original, but to be honest, I'm not gonna cry about not being able to spawn a clown card by pressing the letter O on the title screen anymore. With that shift away from its original identity, I could see the weird mushroom getting caught in the crossfire and being removed. This is also why I personally think the big mushroom no longer has the CRT filter anymore and doesn't change the enemy's appearances. Oh my gosh guys, is that a freaking Mario Odyssey reference? But this is another strong reason why I believe it may have been cut. But there is one more theory I have for this. Okay, so the real reason why the weird mushroom was cut from Mario Maker 2 is because the developers feared having to make a skinny toad spray and call it canon.
All right, and for our final mystery, we have to talk about the second cup power-up from the Super Mario Bros. game style, the fittingly named Mystery Mushroom. This was one of the most popular items in the entire game, as it allowed you to turn into one of hundreds of different characters from not only the Mario franchise, but a ton of others as well. It's pretty obvious why this was so popular, as it let you create levels based on other properties and actually let you play as that character. Now, these didn't actually give you the character's powers, rather it just acts the same as a mushroom, but you stay small. Still, this was a tragic loss. Personally, I do feel like this was a bit oversaturated in the original game, as it felt like some levels relied on it more than they should have, but that's no reason to remove it. Some of the theories from the last section, namely Nintendo wanting to cut back on Super Mario Bros and Mario Maker 2 being less wacky, both apply here. However, I also think there are a lot more things that kept this one back as well, and its removal is honestly a lot more understandable when you take these next few theories into account. For one, adding in all these characters cannot have been easy. Each of them have several different sprites that go along with each and every action they do. On top of that, there were several characters like Sonic or Mega Man that Nintendo do not own the rights to, which would make it difficult to add them back in. Since most of these characters were here to represent an amiibo, it makes sense when Nintendo tried to update the lineup here with all of the new amiibos that have released since then. And maybe even the ones they had to delay because I guess making rectangles is too hard. Now Nintendo could have just kept the first party ones. While it'd be pretty disappointing, it'd certainly be much better than not having any at all. However, However, there is another problem about Mario Maker 2 specifically that makes this power-up about four times harder to implement. One of the major new additions in Mario Maker 2 was the introduction of multiplayer. The original on Wii U was a pure solo experience, however now you can battle it out with friends to race to the end of a level, until you hit a brick block that you can't break, causing all of your friends to catch up and steal the win. Or you could play in co-op where you can… attempt to beat a level as a team. Now the reason this would be an issue for our mystery mushroom here is because each character would need to stand out from one another, meaning that each costume would have to have four variants to cover Mario, Luigi, Toad, and Toadette. This would be a lot of extra effort without much reward for them, so at the end of the day, the mystery mushroom was cut. This is personally the reason I think it was removed, however there is still one more possible theory I have. As I stated before, the Mystery Mushroom was purely aesthetic as it didn't give you any powers of the character you were playing as. A few months after Mario Maker 2's launch though, we got a brand new power-up known as the Master Sword, causing Mario to turn into Link from the original Legend of Zelda on the NES. Unlike the Mystery Mushroom's equivalent though, the Master Sword actually let you use Link's sword, bow, bombs, and shield, allowing for several unique level concepts. It's possible that Nintendo was planning to add this in from the very start, so they held back on adding in the Mystery Mushroom as Link would obviously have to show up there. Now yeah, one unique power-up does seem like a bit too little to cut how much content was present in the Mystery Mushroom, however Nintendo may have actually had bigger plans. I already talked about this game possibly underselling, so maybe Nintendo had planned to add in a Kirby or Samus power-up, but then just pulled the plug. It's sort of sad to think about, but I honestly don't think the Mystery Mushroom has any chance to come back, not even in a Mario Maker 3 if they decide to make it. Even if it does return, it'll likely be a shell of its former self. You may be gone Mystery Mushroom, but you will never be forgotten. But anyways, that's it for this video. Are you all sad you can't murder a Firebro in specifically the Mario World game style? Let me know in the comments. This video actually turned out to be much longer than I was expecting it to be, but talking about all these theories was a lot of fun. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like as I might consider doing more of these in the future. If you have any mysteries you want me to cover or theories about the ones I talked about today, feel free to leave those in the comments. Drybones for Smash, and I'll see you guys next time.